truth. Revelations made in a Saturn myth, authored by David Talbot, connects with astounding accuracy the earliest perceptions of our godlike understanding. The events in the heavens documented in the petroglyphs are of the cataclysmic demise of the almighty life-giving light of heaven. From the petroglyph understanding, these thoughts assimilate into religious belief, but the time that went before still hung long in the memory of the earthlings. According to the theologian and historian Eusebius, who relates the account of the Babylonian priest historian Berossus, the ancient tribes of Chaldea owned their civilization to a powerful and benevolent figure named Onus, who ruled before the deluge. It's hard to remember a time before time, when the earth was a different setting than that of today, but the mythological record tells us of the time before the deluge, before the flood came down. Prior to Onus, the tribes lived without order, like the beasts. But the new god, who appeared as if out of the sea, instructed mankind in writing and various arts. The formation of cities and the founding of temples, he also taught them the use of laws, of bounds and divisions, also of harvesting of grains and fruits, and in short, all that pertains to the mollifying of life he delivered to men, and since that time, nothing more has been invented by anybody. Oenus was simply the Greek name for the Babylonian Ea, the Sumerian Enki. Worshipped in the city of Eridu at the mouth of the Euphrates, the tradition dates to the earliest stage of Sumerian history, a time when the myths say that Enki and his wife, Damkina, governed the lost paradise of Dulman, the pure place of man's genesis. They alone reposed in Dulman, where Enki and his wife reposed. That place was pure, that place was clean. In Dulman, the raven croaked not, the kite shrieked not kite-like, the lion mangled not, the wolf ravaged not the lambs. His home was the cosmic sea Yapsu, the celestial waters of fire raged, splendour and terror. The priests of Ea or Enki deemed him Mumu, the creative word like the Egyptian creator. Enki brought forth the secondary gods through his own speech. Diverse localities worshipped the same cosmic power under different names. In the ancient city of Lagash, the priest honoured the god Ninurta as the pharaoh of the paradisal edge. Ninurta founded temples and cities. The years of his rule connected with the beginning of the world. Where years of plenty, Ninurta sealed the mountain and scattered seed far and wide. And it was the plants with one accord that named him as their king. They tell us that all life on the earth recognised the king. Surely this king was the provider, the grower, the light source of the world. The Sumerians themselves knew that Ninurta was the same as the vegetation god, Damuzi, son of the Apsu. The shepherd of mankind whom classical mythology knew as Adonis and whose catastrophic departure or death became the focus of ritual lamentations for many hundreds of years. But Enki, Ninurta and Demuzi were only aspects of the creator god, An, whose ideogram appears as the earliest Mesopotamian sign of divinity. In all the myths and temple hymns, the Sumerians distinguish the present age from that day, or the days of old, when the gods gave man abundance, the day when the vegetation flourished. The supreme figure reigning over this remote age was An, the central and highest light, whose foremost epithet was Lugal, King. The Sumerians claimed that the very institution of kingship descended from the heaven of An. It was An who produced the beneficent age when a destiny was fixed for everything that was engendered, when An engendered the year of abundance. How widespread was this memory of a golden age? Founded and governed by the creator God himself, it appears that the tradition was either preserved or migrated to every single section of the world.